Software engineering is extremely information intensive. Every day, developers work with source code, version repositories, issue trackers, documentation, web-based, and other information resources. When working with these diverse resources, developers are faced with three issues. First, existing tools typically display information in a fixed form, such as a list or a table, but a different presentation might fit the developer's current need better and enable them to more easily understand the information. Second, developers often need to combine information from more than one source, but they can rarely do this automatically. And third, even after a developer finds the information they need, they often have to take action manually, for example, to make a change to the code. Poor support for these activities makes many common development tasks time-consuming and error-prone. To address these three issues, we integrated a flexible query mechanism into the development environment. In this video, we will demonstrate how the implementation of our approach in the Envision ID can be used to rapidly write queries that meet a wide range of information needs. Let's see how our approach tackles the first issue developers are facing. We will introduce the query framework by demonstrating how information can be visualized in different ways. Here is a class with several methods that call each other. A common piece of information that developers often need is the call graph of a method. We can select the rest method and issue the call graph query on it to see the methods it calls. If we just want to see which are the methods in the call graph of rest and we don't want the arrows, we can issue a different version of the call graphs query. We might prefer to see a table instead of code overlays. In this case, we could pipe the output of the call graph query to the table visualization. And now we have a compact summary of the call graph. Arrows, highlights, and the tables are some of the built-in ways to visualize information. The tool's flexibility also enables custom and even interactive visualizations. We'll show this next. Here is the same class again. We'll issue the call graph query, but this time we'll pipe it to a script called to HTML graph. Let's see what this does. The query opens an embedded browser that uses the vis.js JavaScript library to draw an interactive graph. To achieve this, we had to write the Python script shown here. The script is straightforward. First, it gets all the nodes and edges from the input and converts them to a JSON string. Then it uses these strings to replace placeholders in the prepared HTML snippet and returns the final HTML page, which is then shown in a browser. Here's the HTML code with the placeholders. In a total of 80 lines of code, we created a custom interactive visualization. The extensibility through Python, JavaScript, and HTML enables developers to connect to information and explore it as they see fit. Next, we will show you how our approach tackles the second issue developers face, how to combine information from more than one source. Imagine we are investigating a regression. We know there is something wrong after the match method is called, and we know it used to work. Let's look at the call graph of match. That's a lot of methods. We could manually look at past commits and see which of these methods have changed, but our approach provides an easy alternative. We can pipe the result of the call graph query into the changes query, which will check which of the methods from the call graph have changed in the last five commits and highlight them. Now it's easy to see which method has changed and we can explore its history to see what caused the regression. Let's see what enables us to combine information. Different queries can exchange information via pipes because the inputs and outputs of a query use a unified data exchange format. This exchange format is a set of tuples where the elements of each tuple have names and the tuple as a whole has a tag. This minimal structure allows us to conveniently encode and access typical structures such as sets, lists, and graphs. Filtering and combining can be easily done based on the names or values of elements or the tags of tuples. Result visualizations can be automatically selected based on the tags and tuples present in the final output. For example, a tuple with the tag message is shown as a message associated with a code location. Python scripts can also seamlessly exchange data in this format, allowing the easy integration of additional information. Let's see how we can use a Python script to access additional sources of information. Here is a small example that we will use to illustrate a more advanced use of the query framework. In this example, we want to know why the code is the way it is. One way to answer this question is to link the code with information from the issue tracker. We can select the method and issue a more complex query, which we will paste here. The composite query is long, but its parts are straightforward. First, the AST query returns all top-level statements of the selected method. Then, for all of these statements, we fetch all changes. Afterwards, the result consists of two different pieces of data. The first one associating each statement with the ID of the commit where it changed, 
the second associating a commit ID with the commit's metadata, for example, the commit message. Using the join query, we merge the two into the data relation between statements and commit messages. We use the data relation inside the associated bugs script, which is invoked next. Here is the script. It scans through each commit message looking for bug references and fetches the corresponding bug descriptions from GitHub using the GitHub 3 Python library. The script returns its result using a message tag. If we run the entire query, we get a message for each statement that includes the commit text and associated bug descriptions. In one line, we can post three different information sources, including a REST API accessed through Python. It's possible to create an alias for queries, making it easy to invoke them later. Let's see what else we can do with the query prompt. Here is another small piece of code to help us illustrate the input flexibility of the query prompt. Let's say that we want to compare what we changed on our local branch with what has changed on the master branch since we last synchronized with it. We can use two parallel queries to highlight code changed in the different branches with different colors. To make a parallel query, we can just press Ctrl Enter. Executing the two queries produces the desired highlights. The support for parallel queries simplifies some tasks which would otherwise require a script or cumbersome syntax. Finally, let's see how our queries can be used to tackle the third challenge developers are facing, how to automate actions. This project contains a few methods, some of which are recursive. We would like to print the arguments of each recently changed recursive method when it is called. We could use this debug output, for example, to investigate the termination issue. The following query performs the desired changes to the code. It computes the global call graph and filters out all methods which cannot reach themselves following the call graph relation. This leaves only recursive methods and the changes query further reduces these to only those recursive methods that have changed in the last five commits. Finally, we pipe these methods into another Python script, which will insert code to print the method's arguments at the beginning of their body. Here is the result from running the query. And here is the Python script that modified the code. For each input method, it creates code to print the method's arguments and inserts it into the method body. This example shows how we can do data-driven changes to the code, but in general, it's possible to do any action automatically, for example, writing to a database or creating a bug report. For more information, please visit our webpage.